uh, we'd like today to give you some insight into the exciting dynamic of the program, uh, help you out with a few of the details that are involved, and uh, answer a few, of, a few of the general questions, plus some of the specific uh, questions which you've raised with us. Uh, firstly, just a bit of an overview. Uh, the program is a one-year, three-semester program. So it starts in June and finishes in the following May. Uh, it is full-time. Uh, it is impossible to work at the same time, even part-time. Or, Well, you know, a little bit of support here and there, but definitely you need to be full-time uh, devoted to the course. We have classes all times of the day. Uh, and then the other thing is that uh, it's, it's a group. Uh, you come as a class, you get to know your classmates, you do teamwork together, and so on. So it makes for a very comprehensive uh, cohort experience in which you build a great network, both with your current classmates and with people who've gone through the program before. You'll be in a class of approximately 130 to 140 students, Uh, and that is the class on mass. There are some classes that are done all together, but mostly classes are broken up into smaller groups where you study particular thing, uh, specific things in detail. Over the three semesters, you start with a very detailed uh, introduction and some of the learning of the technical skills with respect to real estate. Uh, that's important to get everyone on the, uh, you know, on the same page regarding ability to analyze and evaluate and understand the challenges of real estate development. The second semester then becomes a little bit of a, a deeper dive, looking into some of the things that you find are particularly of interest to you and that you hope to pursue in your career. At the same time, you're gathering more depth of knowledge about the core things that are involved in real estate across the board. And then in the third semester, what's very important is to pull together all of those things that you've been learning, uh, the, ranging from design, the urban planning, uh, the construction issues, the legal issues, the way in which a project is actually, actually responding to a market analysis and of course the financial analysis of the whole thing to make sure that it can be paid for and that it will produce uh, an, a return on investment. So that's the third semester and we do a number of classes that involve comprehensive projects but most importantly there's the capstone project which is like a final thesis. It's a project where you really prove to yourself and to everyone what you're capable of in terms of a whole real estate development proposal. So it's a deal book. It's really something that you're able to take out there in industry and it feels very much like the things that they are seeing every day, except that I promised yours will be better than what they're seeing most of the day. So uh, that's generally how the uh, program breaks down over the three semesters. Uh, it provides you with uh, all of the various aspects that are comprehensive for real estate across the board, ranging from development through to finance, through to acquisitions, to asset management and property management. Uh, what it also enables you to do, of course, as I say, is tailor it specifically to your interest so that you're able to have some exceptional skills in a, in a certain area Uh, that you're passionate about, and you can go out and pursue that professionally. So that's the general overview. Um, I'll start with answering some of the questions now. Uh, of course, people are always concerned about what is im important in their application. Uh, writing a good personal statement is very important. We uh, do not have specific checkboxes of skill sets and so on. Real estate is one of those professional activities that incorporates a lot of different skills. So therefore, it's really about what you are capable of uh, as an individual uh, in, in really solving problems, because that's really what it is at the end of the day. 
So what I suggest you do with your, um, with your personal statement and so on is give a good uh, description of who you are, uh, talk about the trajectory of your life or how you wish it to be and your professional development and tell us really how you think what you'll learn in this program and your experience in this program will be part of that and will set you up to do that successfully. Really point out to us, if you can, what difference you want to make in the world and how doing this program is going to give you the skills, the approach, the background, the support, and so on. You need to do it. So that's the uh, way in which the personal statement you know, forms, I would say, the core part of your application. Um, in terms of the profile of the students, uh, and, and the types of prior experience you've had, it's very, very open. We have students coming from all sorts of backgrounds, finance, accounting, architecture, urban planning, communication, psychology. Uh, we even had someone who, would, who was a, uh, an actor. So a really good range of people, and that's what's important both for the, I believe, the real estate industry, because it needs, it needs people coming with very interesting uh, frames of reference. And also, I think it, it provides for the student body a wonderful combination of attitudes and perspectives and ways of dealing with the world. So we have students in, in all of those fields. Um, we also, you know, people say, uh, I may be a little non-traditional in terms of having a lot of experience and wanting to pivot my career. Uh, that's absolutely possible with us. In fact, you know, we treat every application holistically. As I say, it's about where you are intending your professional trajectory to go and how this will help you uh, attend to that, no matter what you've done before. Um, hopefully some of what you have done before has created a, you know, an ability to uh, be mature about uh, coping with uh, you know, professional situations, uh, solve problems, uh, be uh, rigorous in your analysis, and so on. Uh, so we're interested in um, you know, uh, also how uh, you will fit within the program. Uh, it's not uh, the experience of being all together in a, in a full-time program is, is really part of the learning experience. It's not just that it happens to be the case. So we're very interested in understanding what you will bring to the program as well as what you will get out of it. Uh, people ask about the GRE scores and um, you know, the various sort of, uh, technical requirements. Uh, we don't publish a minimum score requirement. Um, it's not, uh, it's not uh, top of the list. Uh, the average score for admitted applicants uh, tends to be within the 160, around 160, 161 for the verbal area uh, and about 165 for the quantitative area. Uh, but once again, it's, it's put in as uh, part of your whole package. Uh, now, the other thing about, um, of course, is uh, your experience, your work experience, whether you've had too much, none, not enough, how much, and so on. The average is about 18 months to two years of work experience usually related somewhat to the real estate or the built environment. Uh, some people have, as I say, a lot of experience and not in that field at all. Some people are coming straight from college. That's, you know, that's, that's okay, it's not the usual, but um, just so that you know what, what is, is generally in the middle. But as I say, it's all about what you're planning, your professional career to, how you're planning it to unfold. So if you haven't had any experience in real estate for a significant amount of time, it is good to present some evidence of your ability to work in teams, um, to have been in uh, areas of responsibility, maybe during uh, summer breaks and so on, uh, some internship perhaps, 
and so on that demonstrates that you've been in a work environment, you understand how that is all structured, and you're indicating your ability to be serious about uh, being a professional. Uh, the other thing is, um, you know, try and show that you've been involved in teamwork. Uh, it sounds like a bit of a cliche, but real estate is definitely one of those things that is not done alone. Whether you're hiring architects or you're hiring financiers, you are interacting with other people and being able to be part of a team and work constructively is a very important dynamic. Uh, now, some students, uh, we would say that Probably the typical age is around, uh, the, the average age is around 28, but we have people younger than that and we have people significantly older than that. So the actual age, the actual uh, quantum of work experience is not as critical, although do take it into consideration in guiding you as to when you might be best suited to attend the program. Uh, just a couple of uh, minor things. Um, some people ask if you're able to do some uh, joint degrees or take courses in engineering or in other parts of the university, maybe combine it with a, an MBA. Uh, there are dual degrees, but only within the Graduate School of Architecture, Planning and Preservation. In, within this college, within this school, you're able to do a, a joint degree of the MSRED with either architecture, urban planning, preservation. What you, what you will do is start a semester early in the summer, in June, with us, and then you'll finish a semester later in the fall. Uh, but other than that, uh, it is, it's involved in the same program. Beyond our school, we're not able to offer joint degrees. Uh, you can, of course, enrol in some courses in other schools. Some of them will let you in, others uh, may not. Uh, but certainly uh, some people do uh, tend to seek out uh, some supplement courses here and there from other schools. We are not a STEM program uh, and we don't accept um, any transfer credits from other programs and other schools. Uh, so that's probably about it um, in terms of general administrative questions that you've come through uh, with and uh, just a little bit more about the capstone project because it is a very important part of what you do. It's an individual project even though you do a lot of teamwork during the program and you even do some teamwork in leading up to your capstone, in the end you produce something that is your individual um, production. Uh, some of the, uh, as I say, what you have to do is cover the whole of the aspects of real estate development, everything from the site and what it's like and what the urban situation is, uh, through to what the market analysis is, what are people wanting these days, do they want more apartments, do they want more office space, and so on, uh, through to what sort of construction is feasible. Uh, what, is, what are the building costs going to be? What is the timing of actually constructing and getting, or getting approval and then constructing this project? And then how are you going to finance it? How are you going to finance it during construction? And then afterwards, how long are you going to own it for? And then what are your, who are you going to put in it? Are you going to be selling it as condos or putting in tenants? And how do you market that? So it really is um, hopefully an inspiring piece of work. You get to be really creative, but at the same time realistic and definitely very professional. And that's the objective. Uh, in the uh, final semester also, in the spring semester, there's the opportunity to do uh, the um, internship. Now that is for 20 hours a week. Uh, it is a registered class and it's overseen with uh, your providing reports and uh, specific achievements that you're to, uh, you're to get. Uh, and, um, and usually we have approximately about 40% of the class uh, do a part-time internship in the spring semester. Uh, so that's how the capstone works, uh, sorry, the, uh, the internship works. 
Um, someone said, um, you know, how, what, what, is, what is going to distinguish Columbia from the Columbia Mesred program from other programs? And that's my favorite topic, of course, uh, because we really think that, one, we're a fabulous full-time immersive experience where you not only learn rigorously and deeply, but you also get to share uh, attitudes and inquiries and explorations with your classmates. Uh, you learn to become critical thinkers and to not take things for granted and to really think about how you're going to progress your career and also the built environment. You're locate, we are located in New York City and you know what can beat that? Uh, firstly, we're able to uh, go out and do events and look at things in New York City with respect to real estate. The other thing is the professors, many of the professors, or mo pretty much most of the professors uh, that you will be learning, uh, you, learning from are full-time working in New York. So they're typically at the cutting edge of what's happening in their field, if it's be it uh, acquisitions or debt structuring or a law or construction or planning or architecture and so on. So that's very exciting to have these top-notch people uh, come in and teach you. Uh, you are also able, of course, to uh, stay in touch with a lot of, well, be in touch with a lot of alumni that are in New York and able to in, uh, take part in various of our activities as well. So you really start to build your network with the alumni while you're here in the program. Uh, the other thing, of course, is that um, you know real estate. I think is uh, is is a very sort of holistic, comprehensive, complex, messy uh, type of activity. You know who can define it? Developing a project, getting from a vacant site to a, pro a building that's out there making money for someone and housing other people and uh, being an attractive site for other people and so on is a very, very complex process. Uh, but we really go about it in a, in a way that pulls all these pieces together and, and just isn't overly focused. We don't say one, there's only one thing that's important, that's finance, or there's only one thing that's important, that's design. What we believe is that all of these things merge together to be uh, comprehensively important. So our program really, really does that. All of the courses that you are required to take uh, get everyone onto that same page about that comprehensive and holistic approach. Uh, we really think that um, the graduates of these programs come out you know, very, very well-rounded and, and very, very social. I mean, truly, the, the events that students put on here and the events that they follow up with once they've graduated and so on uh, just shows them to be continuing, uh, continuingly uh, inquisitive and exploring and, uh, and uh, affable and fun-loving. And uh, we really like to see that. And, you know, I, I think you get that feeling as soon as you start. But I'm going to let our students now, uh, our current students, help you out on some of these insights. So, Lizzie, what do you think about that? Uh, you know, did you get the feeling from the beginning? Oh yeah, definitely. Um, my experience in general in this program has been fantastic. Um, it definitely started off with a, an intense summer and now that we're well into our second semester, we are, um, you know, looking into internships and looking towards our careers, um, which is fun to experience because we're meeting a lot of people um, in the field, a lot of alumni, the network here is extremely tight and um, not just among the, the students um, who are in the program with us, our cohort, but also the alumni network, um, which really opens up a lot of doors. So even within you know, just a, a semester and a half, you were already engaged really well with your alumni. Absolutely, right. and a lot of our professors who are alumni as well, um, they describe you know, their years out of, um, out of graduation and they describe having still such a cl close-knit community with um, the people that they graduated with and, and kind of contacting each other whenever they have, they need more information or, um, they, um, 
they need a partner, um, or they That's need right. advice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Well, you know, you're always going to be asking someone. So, what's the office vacancy in you know in in uh, Minnesota, right? You, you know, Absolutely. and you're going to know someone who's there. Exactly. Uh, and also, you know, you're, the professors you come across uh, must have, you know, been pretty exciting when you started, Stephen. And I, I agree. Thanks, Patrice. I, <laughs> I would say that one of the questions you said is what, what really uh, sets our program apart. And when I was making my decision, there were a few things. One was it was a one-year program. Uh, the other was that the, the faculty are mostly adjunct professors who are, are professionals in the field in New York every day. Some are entrepreneurs that run their own business, others work for huge firms, and kind of being a, a sponge absorbing their knowledge and working with them and working on their projects and receiving feedback from them is, has actually been um, uh, really rewarding. That's great, and um, now what about the dual degree and uh, some of your classmates who've been working with this? Uh, how do you think they're managing? Sure. Um, we actually have quite a few dual degree mm. uh, students. Some, mo most of them are in the Masters of Architecture program as well. Uh, it's, it is an intense program, mm. um, but it's, it's interesting to see uh, their pursuit, especially as their coursework is kind of staggered so mm. that they can manage the workload over over the, the, I think it's like a three year term. Three and a half year, yep. yeah. Yes. And actually it's, it's quite nice to have dual degrees as well as single degrees students in the program because um, a lot of our projects are kind of mini capstone projects where we work in groups. And so having kind of the architecture knowledge as well as, you know, then also having people from various different backgrounds, people who are brokers, people who've worked in debt, and you have yeah. so many different people coming together and um, it really creates a holistic view of real estate development. You know, if I could actually just add on to that, mm -hmm. I, I would say that um, I noticed in a lot of the questions, it was asking things like, uh, do architects struggle? Do finance people struggle? Who's better suited? And, and I would say that one of the things I've actually enjoyed the most about our large group is getting to know everyone and the diversity of backgrounds. The, the backgrounds you had mentioned as well as uh, the large number of foreign students we have and people who are from all different uh, geographies of the United States, North America. Um, and being able to work with everyone and, and kind of, you know, combining and meshing all those different perspectives to achieve our, our group projects has actually been, uh, it, it's interesting to hear, especially uh, coming from a, a CPA background and hearing from my, uh, my friends who are architects or construction folks and they just bring an insight that I never had before. That's right. So there's, you know, you're up against, you're up against people with real, uh, real skill set that's totally foreign to you and now you're going to learn about it and so on. And the pain is really shared, right? It's not as though, you know, someone coming in from finance doesn't need to really work hard to understand planning and zoning requirements and, you know, how to resolve design issues and what construction right. basics are about and, and so on. And similarly, people from the architectural side, you know, will pick up the finance, you know, uh, uh, concepts. And um, some of our best students, some of our top students, have, have come in as architects, former architects and so on. And, uh, you know, if you put the time in in that first semester and you, uh, you just get very uh, capable with Excel and modeling, uh, you know, it's, it's a tool. It's a tool that you can use to be even more creative. So it's definitely not something for people who don't have a finance background to be to be afraid of. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and for me personally, I know one of the questions um, was what was the class that people most struggled with? And um, I would say for a good portion of the people, um, finance one in the summer was definitely um, a very rigorous class, um, kind of learning the basics of these sometimes complex Comp concepts that now seem very basic to us. Um, for others, it might have been the more development focused or kind of architecture focused classes. Um, architecture, maybe more, more development than architecture. Um, but one thing that um, was really helpful is that A, we have great professors. Um, B, we have extra tutor sessions that are scheduled into, um, into the week, weekly. Um, and then we also just have, as we all mentioned, such a great cohort of, um, 
of classmates that you know someone might be really good at this concept or teaching it, um, and I might help them out on that other you know more um, urban planning or architecture focused um, concept in a different class. Or Absolutely, zoning or exactly. And people put the, I see people put their hand up for impromptu explanations of things, yeah. which is really fabulous, yeah. you know, and so on. If you know a, a good group of the folks are struggling with you know, the latest finance concept then, you know, but someone knows it really well and has been working with it, you know, they take, they just say, I'll teach it out in the cafe. So it yep. really works very well. Um, I think that's great. Uh, some people who are, you know, thinking about coming and they, they make the decision and then they, they're preparing uh, before starting in, in June uh, and they say, you know, what could, what sort of things could I read or complete or, or so on before I start the program? And um, you know, I think do read some interesting books about real estate, anything you like, quite frankly. Uh, it's all informative. Um, and if you're not very capable in, uh, mathematically with Excel modeling, then do just try and start with you know, some of the simple formats on that. Uh, you don't need, certainly don't need to come in being able to build real estate uh, models. But some facility with real estate, with, with sorry, with financials and, and calculations in Excel is probably pretty good and know your way around an Excel spreadsheet. What about other things, do you think, Stephen? You know, another one is um, the, the coursework is very interesting. There's uh, some courses that are your traditional academic test driven courses, but then a lot is presentation and project based. And where I'm really strong in Excel, I'm every bit as weak in PowerPoint. And so I would say to focus on, on areas like that. That's true, even get your PowerPoint skills yep. or SketchUp. If you, uh, if you don't have an architectural design background, SketchUp is quite a, an easy little program to master and have fun with. And you, you, know, you can do your own little illustrations and cartoons for your friends and family as well with that. So, uh, and Lizzie? Um, yeah, I would say, just kind of keeping up on current events in the real estate world is always a good way to prepare for the program because you kind of come with a basic knowledge and some good questions to ask. Um, you are kind of going to be around professors who are at the cutting edge of a lot of real estate development, so it's always good to kind of be in the know. Um, and then for me personally, because I didn't um, have a finance background per se, I, um, I definitely looked at online courses. I did, um, I think there's Breaking into Wall Street. There's a couple other yep. courses available online. And um, I did spend a good amount of time kind of trying to refine my Excel skills or even just build them up from the ground up. And that will prove very valuable once you get here. That's actually a great point about the periodicals. Get, get into the habit of checking the real deal and biz now, mm -hmm. commercial observer every morning because um, things change rapidly, especially in New York, and the conversation comes up with our professors. Mm -hmm. That's right. The real deal is online. It is, you know, a, a very key part of uh, real estate activities uh, in North America. It's not just New York, uh, but it's a great overview of everything from deal structuring to development uh, issues and so on, and, and a lot of good gossip too. Mm -hmm. So, um, <laughs> and then uh, Lizzie, you managed uh, the online course called Breaking Into Wall Street, yes. and it is very good. I suggest you do the model that is on basic financial mm -hmm. analysis, corporate financial analysis, not the one on real estate analysis, because that is uh, a template that's really probably not as great as you could get. Uh, but definitely if you do the breaking into Wall Street introduc introduction to financial analysis, mm -hmm. that modeling skill uh, is it's a very competent program and yeah. really helps you step through things. So I, I do suggest that that's a, um, a good way of getting those things. Um, so uh, we need also um, uh, some to, to talk about how focused the project, we've said how fantastic it is to be in New York, but we don't want to think that it's not, you know, we're just New York centric and we don't care about anything else and what happens anywhere else. 
the program is you know, full of people from all over the world, and they're going to bring questions, and they're going to be you know, wanting to know how they're going to do things in those other parts of the world. So we can't be New York-centric. Uh, on the other hand, you know, there's a lot to learn in New York, and a lot of things that unfold in other parts of the world are sort of started in New York or tried and uh, tested in New York. Uh, and so we do use New York zoning and New York urban planning and, new, some, and, the, and the US financial structures and the US tax code uh, to be uh, the, basically the framework with which you learn about all of those things in, in, a, in a way that's about their essential dynamics, not just with reference to New York. Um, what do you think? Do you think, uh, and plus we also uh, have in the spring uh, global trips so you do get to study about and learn about doing cross-border or doing real estate in other parts of the world. So, you know, there's definitely that opportunity. Do you find that it's not too New York centric? For I, I, I completely agree. I would say that most of, I, I think I would probably taken 20 courses now across all the disciplines of real estate and most disciplines from construction to finance, architecture, those are universal disciplines. Um, you know, more zoning, urban planning type of courses may be geared more towards New York, and oftentimes New York will be a case study. Um, but I think most of the concepts can be applied most places. And I think you find, especially in something like an affordable housing class that Lizzie and I are taking right now, mm -hmm. um, affordable housing is probably uh, so much more complex in New York than it is in most places yeah. that it, you know, if if you can do it here, you can do it anywhere. Yeah, that's about <laughs> it, it. it probably gets easier. <laughs> um, yeah, I agree as well. I think in uh, some of the classes, or a, a good amount of the classes, we do use New York as a laboratory, but that's not to say that these um, concepts are not translatable to the US and the world. We have you know, students from all over the US and students from all over the world, a very good amount. So um, you know, it's also very interesting to hear kind of the global perspective from, from our students as well as our professors because we do have um, a lot of global classes. We do have these global trips. Um, we have students who've taken their own initiative to go on you know, trips to um, Toronto or different places, so um, there's definitely a global vibe, I would say. Absolutely, and a club that uh, you know definitely has people from all over the place and oh, yeah. explores their own, right. uh, you know, the and, and so on. So, uh, no, I I think it's um, you know we it's just uh, a lovely rich group of uh, all different perspectives mm -hmm. and so on. You know, New York's just a good test case, uh, as you say, a case study in which we can kick it around and see what's yep. good and what, what's not so good in New York. Mm -hmm. uh, now, a lot of people will be, of course, considering this uh, as very relevant and core to their careers uh, and have some questions about uh, you know, how, it how the program is going to work in with your careers and getting a job and so on. Uh, and the question is, of course, what, current, what programs are in place to assist students in uh, finding employment upon graduation. Now, you know, our program, we're an educational program, we're not a, uh, a placement um, center and so on, but uh, so we don't actually place students and we don't have, uh, we, we, don't, uh, we don't actually uh, mediate in hiring because that's really beyond our capability, but what we do have is a dedicated uh, associate director uh, who, uh, that's Rebecca, and I think some of you have already been in touch with her, and she's the career advisor to students, uh, and she is with you from the beginning, from summer when you start, right through uh, to working with you on getting jobs. So what she does is she meets one-on-one, -on -one, she helps you prepare your packages in terms of where you are thinking of going, how you approach that area of the real estate industry, what the network is, uh, you know, and some of our alumni who are out there in that area you get to talk to. Um, and, uh, and, and basically she'll help you, uh, give you advice, she gives sessions, quite a few sessions, you've already had some, I'm sure, mm -hmm. uh, on how to present yourself, how to do your resume properly, how to do cover letters, uh, how to actually articulate your passion and your interests and what you intend to be contributing 
uh, to a job or to the uh, company that you join. Um, she, you know, teaches you how to uh, put, put your package together, I, say, I would say, and, and present yourself accurately. Also, she's very, she's very involved in um, continually with industry engagement. So she's always meeting with those people and understanding what they're looking for and how they judge and assess potential candidates. Uh, so, you know, she knows what the, those companies are looking for, what's peculiar about them, well, what's interesting or unique about them and so on. So she can give you feedback in that as well. Uh, the type of projects that, uh, the, sorry, the type of um, jobs that people get are just right across the board. Uh, we, we, as I say, we really believe that real estate is a very broad uh, industry, has fascinating aspects uh, right across it, uh, but what you learn here is the core fundamental aspects that you can then take and hone to your interest at some point across that spectrum. Uh, so therefore we have people who, who really go out and do uh, very different uh, things upon graduation, including uh, development, uh, even some people have, uh, some people do development uh, globally, other people do just investing globally, other people have done structuring, uh, financial structuring, workouts, asset management, managing huge portfolios of properties uh, all over the world and so on. So we tend to have, um, you know, the types of companies, uh, people from all of those areas. We've, uh, we, our recent alumni have been employed in uh, related companies, Tishman Spire, Oxford Properties, Credit Suisse, Goldman Sachs, Blackstone, DDG uh, Partners Alloy Development, which is, which is a firm of architect developers, the, the absolute combination of architecture and development. Uh, by the practitioners themselves, uh, RxR Realty, uh, the Durst Corporation, Heinz, Excel Development, the CIM Group, uh, Clarion Partners, and so on. So many, many types. Uh, additionally, we, uh, we have uh, quite a few students who wish to go into the public sector. And my background has been back and forth between the public sector and the private sector, and, and I really encourage that. So we have very strong relations with uh, a lot of public entities, uh, and uh, graduates have found jobs with the New York City Economic Development Corporations. Uh, I have someone just getting a job over in San Francisco in, the, in one of the planning departments, uh, housing authorities uh, all over the world. Um, uh, school of Construction, uh, and then on some of the public development projects like the Brooklyn Navy Yard uh, and things like that. So we have uh, we have basically uh, you know great opportunities in in all of those fields. Now, do re realize that real estate is a very cyclical industry. So it is you know sometimes developments on, sometimes developments way off. <laughs> okay, and we have, we you know, we have had a very upward, particularly in America, in North America, we've had a, a very up, uh, you know, booming economy for quite a while, and a lot of development has occurred, and probably the outlook is that there's not going to be so much development in the next few years as what we've currently done gets absorbed. Um, however, there's always things in, to do in real estate, and that is uh, managing the existing assets very well to create really good value, to reposition them, to rethink how they're actually working operationally. Uh, and always finance, you know, there's always going to be financial structuring and uh, loans rolling over and uh, all of that type of thing. So there's always things to do, but just do realize that you've got to be realistic regarding the real estate cycle. And so how about, uh, you know, your, Stephen, your interest in your career and, you know, are you seeing that you're able to, to tailor this and, and work out how to best suit, ready yourself? A absolutely. So I, I really came here after working in, uh, in the big four public accounting arena for a while. And I, I'm looking to transition my career from the back of house, back of office to more of the front of office development side. And so, you know, just the experience that we're getting in the classroom and the introduction to uh, certainly course loads that I've never seen before from architecture to construction has kind of opened my eyes. Uh, just starting really the, the career finding process now, putting out applications for internships, 
and seeing a lot of different opportunities, whether they're development related or finance related, um, I will say that I'm, for someone with a finance and accounting background, I'm trying to do a little bit something different. I'm moving more towards development, where I know we had a few people to ask questions, you know, what do finance and accounting people usually do? And I think the answer to that is that with that sort of background, it's much easier to transition into a finance role, and, and that's a strong selling point. Um, but I, I'm, I'm feeling that in this program has been good for me to take to retool and to transition and basically be able to make both of those possibilities uh, uh, opportunities for myself. Absolutely, because you know, if you can work out how to finance construction yep. projects <laughs> and get those fabulous returns and yet not have things screw up, you know, you're going to be a multi billionaire yep. pretty quickly. Hopefully, <laughs> from your lips. <laughs> exactly. Plus, you'll build a lot of great buildings. So, uh, and Lizzie, how about you? Um, so, my background um, I studied architecture in undergrad. Um, since then, I've kind of mostly had a career um, as a professional dancer, actually, um, but I've done um, uh, consulting work in real estate development, and I've also worked for the Low Line Organization, which is um, an organization trying to build an underground park in New York City. So um, kind of from this background, um, I, I realized that my, my passion was not in architecture per se, but more in kind of the multi-layered, complex, large-scale development projects um, where you deal with public-private partnerships um, and, and just those various different layers of policy and approvals and zoning and all those things that um, really get me going. So I kind of came here with an interest in transit-oriented development, um, in infrastructure, and public-private partnerships. Um, and I've definitely, I know there was also a question about um, that specifically, and you know, it's been great because um, I've, I've, you know, since I've been here, just through my professors and um, alumni network and the mentor that um, GSAP or the MS Red program um, set me up with, I've been able to meet people from the MTA, from the EDC, um, from real estate advisory firms that work in, on the public and the private side. Um, I just did a site tour at Moynihan, Moynihan Station, um, which is kind of an extension of, the, of Penn Station into um, the old US post office um, in Midtown Manhattan. Um, and so I've met people from Economic Development, um, or excuse me, the Empire State Development Corporation. Um, and so, yeah, that's where I'm hoping my career path will lead me. Mm, I think it's good, you know, you decide what you want to do, what difference you want to make in the built environment, and, you know, we help you prepare the skills to go out and make it happen. I think that's, you know, that's really what we're able to uh, pull together for you as you come through. Uh, and, um, you know, students often come from, we have a lot of students from foreign countries, and, uh, you know, some of them want to go, a lot of them obviously want to go back, uh, some of them want some experience in New York, and ask about how easy it is to get jobs. Uh, in New York and in America post-graduation. Uh, it is going to be obviously more challenging, particularly in the current sort of political environment, uh, but, uh, you know, uh, and, and that is what it is. But, you know, I, I think if you uh, get started early, uh, you understand that things like uh, doing internships, uh, working even during the break over December, between mid-December and when you come back in, in January, there's a good five weeks. And I've had some great students do internships during that time, which really set them up well mm -hmm. for being able to demonstrate that they've got capability and they know how to be, you know, effective in an office and so on. So, you know, it's, uh, it, it's uh, definitely uh, a challenge, but uh, you, you do have a visa that allows you uh, to do some work experience. Uh, the other thing is, um, you know, people ask uh, what sort of housing is here. There is a housing lottery that you can enter, but it certainly isn't a guarantee. Um, so what about job, career, how people are looking at their careers and, you know, how they're settling into the city here in New York uh, from other countries? Maybe we sort of will finish up with a few words on that. Sure. So um, I know a lot of my classmates, they uh, have housing through the lottery or they secured housing uh, privately in apartments, usually on the Upper West Side, some in Midtown, uh, and, and a lot of them are um, uh, rooming together. Mm -hmm. So they found each other, had a good living relationship there. Um, 
I would say from a career perspective, it's really interesting to get to know people, and this is all part of the networking and getting to know the classmates, is some of our uh, uh, overseas classmates want to stay in New York. And others actually have family offices or family buildings or aspirations to go back home and do big projects there. So it's an interesting mix. It's mm. a very diverse group. But, um, mm. but I, I feel like everyone really has an idea of what they want to do and they're and they're following their ambitions which is great mm -hmm. and uh, and Lizzie are you seeing people sort of getting more information as they learn more about you know and, and sort of assessing and building what they want to do with their oh, careers oh yeah absolutely that's for all of the students um, as I as I've gotten here um, I've refined what I want to do even more um, and you know for international students um, who you know I know many of um, I think uh, a lot of them really take advantage of the networking opportunities and um, you know they kind of go out of their way um, to go to site visits go to office visits speak to professionals in the field sometimes they you know offer to help professionals in the field, um, kind of just on the side, just for, for their own learning experience. Um, and I know a lot of them are looking towards um, internships, as we are too, um, to kind of give us extra credentials, you know, for when we go out into um, the, the, the job hunt um, mm. in the summer. Mm, very mm -hmm. good. Yeah. Anyway, my last few words, uh, you know, your words of advice from being all of this, uh, you know, few months in, uh, to prospective students, you know, yeah. uh, should they come? Why should they come? And you know, you, you should come. Right? Whether <laughs> whether you want whether you're making a transition or you're trying to retool and improve yourself in the industry, I will say um, the questions that were submitted were really interesting. There were a lot of very common themes. If you are concerned about a certain mold here at Columbia mm -hmm. that you're either not financial enough or you're not architectural enough. Don't worry about it. It's, it actually, I think, adds to the richness of the experience, everyone's different background. If you have an interest and a passion in real estate and you have an ambition or a dream that you want to follow, uh, come here, immerse yourself in the program, learn from these great professors, and you'll be better off for it. Great. Lizzie? Agreed. Um, I also saw that kind of underlying theme um, and just to go off on that also as far as age you know that we have so many people who have just graduated we have people who are well into their career well into their other careers who are looking to transition so there are people from all walks of life um, and it is it's just a great program I'm super happy here um, frankly and um, glad to be here it's it's intense it's rigorous but in the best way you're gonna learn so much so quickly Great, great. Well, thank you. Uh, we do hope you'll join us. And, uh, you know, if you love the built environment, if you love real estate, if you love thinking about it, creating it, building it, financing and so on, we're here. We're going to make sure that as a professional, you're smart, strong and, uh, and socially responsible. Thank you. Look forward to seeing you.